Okay. Hold on. Again, having difficulty setting the time, and I don't know why. I'm just going to set it manually. Um, it happened to me last time, so I'm going to run this by um, IT after tonight's meeting because I don't know. Maybe it's just my laptop that's doing this. It's not just you. It's something that Shelby had sent an email out while you were gone on. So you're doing it just right. Just set it manually and it'll be fine. Perfect. Okay. All right. It is set. All right. So we can move on to uh, roll call. All right. Uh, first of all, welcome to Protection and Policy for the City of Green Bay for May 24th, 2021. We'll take roll call. Alder Stoyer, I am here. Alder Lefebvre. Here. Alder Stevens. Here. Vander, at least, is excused for family matters. So um, we do have a quorum. Okay, one second. All right, um, on to approval of the agenda. Okay, approval of the agenda. Uh, I'd, I'd like a motion for that, please. Motion I'll make a motion. Approval. Oops, oh, second. All right, motion by Stephen, seconded by Lefebvre. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. all opposed. That passes unanimously. Okay. And now we are on to approval of the minutes. Okay, approval of the minutes. Um, uh, I'll move to approve. Second. <laughs> okay, do we, have a sec do we have a second? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimously. Yes. Yeah. All right. And then now on to regular item number one. All right, number one, for consideration with possible action, a request from Alder Chris Worry, District 8, that the Green Bay Common Council be comprised of 15 members and to implement with the current 2020 census redistricting. Uh, okay, I, staff, um, I, I know that Celestine or uh, Clerk Jeffries was gonna do something on this as well. Yep, I think I'm going to defer to to go ahead and um, and move forward with her presentation. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Attorney Bunker mm -hmm. and <clears throat> Chair uh, Stoyer. Actually, my item is number two. Um, this first item, you know, we could talk about the redistricting with my item number two, but this first item really is not something that I have a purview on. Uh, so, uh, you know, just wanted to let you know that. Oh, Can I make I'll a move? Yes, go ahead. Can I make a motion that we bring, put one and two together because one, number one, depend on number two? Correct, yes. Um, and I, apologies, I was reading number two as being number one. Oh. <laughs> yes, that is true. So um, any any kind of changes that we, we do to the composition of uh, fill is uh, tied with um, the redistricting and the, and the, cens and the census results. Um, so yes, it would make sense to, to take up items number one and two together. Okay. okay. Well, so we'll have the presentation then. Thank you did so much, Chairman. Did, did, um, we need, did we need a motion? Fine. Go ahead. Okay, I made the motion to combine one and two. Okay. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, Lieutenant Allen, can you make me a co-host, please, so I can share my screen? Awesome, thank you. Okay, so I did email out this um, census presentation as a PDF to uh, the entire council this afternoon. Um, sorry for the plain the plain Jane, uh, Jane isn't always plain, but the sort of white background, I didn't have the opportunity to, to make it fancy. Um, so, but census 2020, um, and, and Alder uh, Lefebvre, just so that you are, let's see, let me put this in presentation mode. Okay. And can everyone see that as a full screen? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Awesome. So, um, oh, sorry. Um, there we go. So, oh, you know, just in terms of whether or not the population will support, will you know, will Green Bay have a population growth such that it would support 15 alders? Um, I would say the all indications are no, um, that we won't. Uh, if you just base it on population, um, in other words, if you just base it on the number of people who uh, you currently serve, divided by um, so the number of people in Green Bay divided by the number of people you currently serve, and that gives you approximately 12 council members. So I don't see that Green Bay will have a, a big increase in population to justify 15. But then of course, there are other political considerations um, as to whether or not uh, the people uh, and the council would want to have 15 members represented them instead of 12. So uh, the, the request from Alder Weary was for timeline process implementation and proposals. So um, just a little background, uh, census began with, you know, census day last April. Um, all residents are counted once in place and that's all residents, uh, all human beings who were residing in the country, infants, citizens, prisoners, permanent residents, people on visas, people in resident, residential care facilities. Um, and this was, uh, uh, this is where you are for that portion of the most part of 2020. So college students mostly live, um, you know, some commute, but some do in fact live either on campus or in an apartment off campus. So those young people, for instance, would have been counted um, in their college addresses as opposed to their homes, their parents' homes addresses. Um, so we did have some new methods in 2020 that were implemented that were some mobile friendly questionnaires and some internet based questionnaires. Um, there were 10 questions for the census. Uh, some people confuse the census with the American Community Survey. So American Community Survey is a, a subset <clears throat> of the census. And in the, a while ago, there was the long form census and the short form census. And the short form was 10 questions, the long form was complicated, um, many, many more questions. And so the Census Bureau uh, has decided not to ask those questions, the long form census questions anymore. Instead, they use the American Community Survey. And um, the American Community Survey asks, you know, how many rooms do you have? Do you have electricity? You know, do you have the internet? Do you rent or own? So the American Community Survey is much more in depth and it provides a lot of information that not only academics, demographers use, but then also uh, people who want to relocate uh, businesses, people who want to, you know, school districts, universities. So, uh, but for this census 2020, it was 10 questions. Census questions are available in 12 languages. Um, now, of course, we have a plague, a pandemic, and those census results should have been delivered to the president by the end of last year. But because of the delays in tabulation and, and um, uh, gathering, uh, there was some delays in terms of sending it to the president. So I have the cool little graphic. So that as of um, the day that this information was released, uh, which was in April, that was the population of the United States, 331,449,281. Um, obviously we've had some increases in, and decreases since then. Um, interestingly enough, the population grew only 7.4%, 7, 7 the second lowest growth rate in US history. Now there are lots of reasons for that, lots and lots of reasons, um, but that is what we have been handed and that is the number that we are going with. I'm happy to say, that um, the mid Wisconsin is not going to lose representation in Congress. Uh, some other states have lost representation and so only a couple have gained, but fortunately Wisconsin will not be losing our seven um, congressional representatives. So the census is going to, the Bureau is going to deliver specific results to states in August. And this, these results are not really available to the public. They are available only in a way that um, people who are authorized to deal with that information can then manipulate that information. So we will receive our city Green Bay, will receive our statistics along with the rest of the state. Um, then by the end of September, the final redistricting data toolkit will be available to all states and the public. 
Um, and unfortunately, because of the pandemic uh, delays and you know, um, just making sure the Census Bureau, they were making sure that they were getting it right, we only have a couple of months to actually create these new aldermanic districts. So process. Um, so staff will construct a variety of aldermanic maps for approval by council. This is what happened back in 20, 2010. Um, then we, there are certain things that you consider, the staff considers, and then when the um, council's looking at these maps, you all consider. And population proportion, one person, one vote, contiguousness and compactness. Now, there's a great video from the League of Municipalities, which they did at the end of last year. And I put the link there. I, what, when I sent to you this afternoon, um, that was a PDF. So if you can't copy the link, just let me know and I'll send you the live link in an email. But that's a great video. It's about an hour and it really explains um, how you construct a census map. So I did pull a few uh, screenshots from there. So compactness. So you see the blue um, uh, uh, district on the left is compact, nice and neat. The brown district on the right is not compact. Um, that, so the, we are required to, to aim for compactness. Uh, contiguity. Um, so when you look at the brown um, district on the left, that is contiguous and it has, you know, some steps in it. But when you look at the blue uh, district on the right, you see there are some pieces kind of like it broke off. That is not allowed. <laughs> and one person, one vote. So this, I won't go through this. You can read this on your own, but essentially you want to make sure that your 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 range, the difference between the largest and the smallest distri district is less than 10%. And the calculation is explained there. So that's something else that we want to do. This is probably something more at the state level than the city level, but um, we do have our responsibilities to make sure that we have one person, one vote. So the pro the, another thing about the process. So we don't have the software quite yet, so I couldn't give you a live demonstration. But, um, and I think Alder Soil will appreciate this. Essentially, what you see here are the 12 alder aldermanic districts. Um, alder Stevens district is the one that is kind of close to the um, apex of those arrows and is a kind of a tan color. Uh, I don't, you probably can't see my pointer. So that one is the, the district that is the least compact, quite frankly. So when we go for um, drawing, redrawing these districts, like I said, we're, going, we're drawing them with the idea that they should be one person, one vote. We have a population proportionment. We have um, districts that are contiguous and districts that are compact. And there are various ways to draw these boundaries in this software. I had an opportunity to look at it um, last year and uh, uh, it's actually rather neat. And so then, like I said, we would um, have some options that council can choose from. One thing I do want to mention is that <coughs> um, in the last census in 2010, um, the county had drawn their lines first. So I'm not sure if that's going to happen this time. Um, you know, everything is a bit late delayed. So unfortunately, I don't have any uh, understanding of what's going to happen regarding that, but um, we will find out and certainly report that to you. So uh, we implement the maps and uh, we basically there are proposals that we will provide, then we choose and implement those maps. Um, and uh, ideally, <laughs> before Thanksgiving, because of course we have an aldermanic election um, potentially in February. And as you know, your papers are due um, at the beginning of January in 2022. So kind of quick there, like I said, the, the uh, I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, the, uh, the league video is very good and uh, open to questions from council. Yeah, Alder Lefebvre. Um, yes. How does the county uh, affect our districts? Because I know they did um, 
I thought they pretty much, um, when the county does theirs, we have to kind of match them. Yes, that's right. That's exactly what happens. So they, they, you know, I don't know, because I think the county population may have grown. And so we may be, we may be in a situation like we are now where we actually have fewer county board representatives um, in the city of Green Bay. And perhaps there are more county board representatives overall. That's what happened in 2010. So what, how it affects it is that we are then a little hamstrung in terms of how we draw districts if they draw theirs first. But not something that we can really, you know, head off. If, if we do ours first, can, can we actually do ours first? Um, Joanne, were you going to say something? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm not exactly sure if we can do ours first. I, I, I'm not 100% sure. I will need to get an answer to you on that. And then one other question, I know sure. uh, uh, Alder Weary had asked about going to 15. If we, if our, you said the county gained, but the city, uh, did we lose or did we stay? No, 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 no. We, we definitely gained population, but most likely not enough to, you know, it's really, I'm just talking about a numbers um, mm -hmm. issue, Alder. So mm -hmm. you know, we did gain population only by about 1%. So that means if we were to keep the same size aldermanic districts and have, that means we wouldn't have 15 people. So we would then have to have smaller districts in terms of population in order to have 15 people. So it, I'm just saying that in terms of population, there isn't a population argument to go to 15. There'd be a political argument to go to 15. And it's probably right now we'll stay 12. There's not enough to have in terms of population. Two more, one on each side, right? Correct. In terms okay. of, yes, in terms of population, it does not appear that there's enough population growth in the city of Green Bay to keep the aldermanic districts the same population size and then have 15. Okay. I was going to, are you done, Alder Lefebvre? Yes, oh, yes okay. thank you. Okay. I had a question, a few too, for uh, Clark Jeffries and whoever else may chime in. You know, I know years ago, Green Bay had 24 alders, and a lot of times it was tied in with uh, the county as far as the same numbers. So if you were a county supervisor, you'd also be an alder. <clears throat> well, that changed over time. So um, I think one of the big indicators, like you, you mentioned, Clerk Jeffries, was the fact that population has a lot to do with it. Our population has grown, but very incrementally. Not, not a lot. So I, I can understand why 12 might be working. I think Alder Weary brought up the fact, and uh, Alder Lefebvre mentioned it as well, that uh, he was looking for 13 or possibly 15 to, um, so that the council would be able to vote and not worry about the mayor chiming in on that, although the mayor is part of the council. So that was just one of his takes. And I think we can talk about that as time moves on, but we really can't do a whole lot now until we we actually have the data, correct? Correct. I, I would agree that the data is really important in order to make some of those decisions. I think the only thing you're saying though, election in February, that would be a primary. And then the election, the general election would be in April. So by the time the maps are finished, there's not a whole lot of time. Accurate, as you say. that is accurate. Yes, unfortunately. And it's winter time too. So that's, uh, it is what it is. So it's a tough, tough time for campaigning in that. And if you change your district, you know, you don't have contact with those people. Um, I've been on council since 2012, so I don't have to go through that whole census thing, but I know Alder Weary did and a few others did as well. And they said it's quite a, quite a transition. So I'm, I'm looking at hoping, if at all possible, if the population hasn't gone up all that much to try to keep it as contiguous as we can with what we have. If there's some minor changes, so be I, you know, wholesale changes like happened in 2010, I don't think it's overly necessary to do that here unless we decide to go with 13 or 15. But like I said, with the population being only going up maybe 1% over the last number of years, there really isn't a whole lot of need for it. That's my estimation. Thank you, Alder. Any other All right. questions? Uh, Alder Gerlach? 
I just wondered if historically, um, are the aldermanic districts always redrawn after a census? Is there always an adjustment? Yes. Yes. yes, there's always that. That I mean, it, you could choose. I mean, we do have some population. So we do have some population growth, Alder, and then we also have some density growth, right? So we have some new apartments. And so you always want to do take a look at where those lines are in terms of the number of people that um, we've decided that need to be represented by one Alder. So yes, we would take that opportunity to redraw the lines. And maybe that it, they're very similar. I know check. what you're saying is you always look at it, but my question is, does it always result in a change? Um, the, you know, mm -hmm. since I have been with the city, it has always resulted in a change. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Alder Lefebvre, you had another question? You're on mute. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to think what um, Alder Gerlach was saying. If we added one more, that really wouldn't give a lot of, I mean, by the time we did it, uh, wouldn't give you know people a lot of time to um, decide to run for that 13th uh, district. Um, Cause it is good. Yeah, it's good to have an odd number It's true. Um, because we have a lot of density in some areas, we maybe, I don't know how we would, there'd be a lot of shifting, I think by doing that, probably where the apartments are, I'm thinking, uh, if you had to, because there might be a lot, like she said, density, uh, a lot of people in one district in an area, you'd have to push some district up. You might have to go in two, three districts. So I think, yeah, it's gonna be really difficult, I think. So yeah, this is something we're really gonna have to look at and really think about. I think some Thank of that will be central city though too. You get a lot of density in the central city and then along even university and some of the areas toward the university mm -hmm. out there, uh, Imperial Lane, some of those areas, anything where there's been new development over the last 10 years where you have density of population, that's where those changes will occur. I, and I, that, I, yeah, and that would be probably moving people. If we do, we'd be moving people too many, I think, uh, older districts might be involved. So it's really going to really throw a wrench into <laughs> the people who, who are in the district going to run again. I mean, it's, yeah, they're going to have a lot of maybe new people, new areas. Right. Yeah, it's something we're really going to have to think about. Okay. Is there anything else, Alder Stevens? Do you have anything? Oh, Kathy asked my questions. <laughs> okay. Well, then um, I would suggest probably receiving and placing this on file unless uh, you know we have to get more data before we can really do something unless somebody else has another idea and then i will follow up um, with you to make sure that i answer all the lafay's question about the relationship to the county drawing lines okay Mark, yes, i don't know is that alder it just says chris is that alder weary no on? no okay i don't think I don't know. He's uh, not here today. I don't. I don't believe. All the worry okay. is. He, are Are you here? All the worry. I don't no. think that's okay. him. Okay. All right. I did want to mention that uh, Alder Gerlach and Alder uh, Dorf are also present at this meeting. All right. Um, I'll, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to receive and place on file. Okay. Second. All right, any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, that passes unanimous, unanimously. And that was for, uh, this for two and three, correct? Attorney Bunger? Uh, you're breaking up, you're, you're breaking up. Uh, all there, it was for one and two, not two and yeah. three. I, yeah. Did I say one and two? I thought I did. All right, are we ready for number three? Uh, yep, we are set for item number three. Okay, consideration with possible action on a request by CH Bar LLC at 301 South Broadway to temporarily amend their liquor license June 5th to hold an outdoor area along the side of the building. Staff. A uh, lot department has a... Police. We have no objections. Uh, they've done this and they're, they're really good at what... Uh, having that 
outdoor van. Okay. How many years have they done this, uh, Lieutenant? Any idea? I believe it's been a couple of years they've done this now, and uh, there's been no issues. Okay. Okay. All right. I would entertain a motion. I'll motion make a to motion. approve. Oh, motion by second. Stevens to approve, seconded by Lefebvre. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. All right. Item. Number Item four. Number four. Number four. Number four, consideration with possible action on an appeal by Cynthia Nelson regarding an appeal of her operator's license, staff. Yes, uh, staff recommendation is to deny the appeal as the appellant is a convicted felon and a habitual law offender for offenses that substantially relate to the licensed activity and is therefore precluded under the state statutes. Um, there should be a denial memo in your uh, packet that uh, goes over the, um, the applicable offenses that were um, considered in this um, decision. Okay, and um, police? Police concur with law. Okay. All right, well, we have, uh, I believe Ms. Nelson is here today, so I would um, entertain a motion to open the floor. Make motion a motion. To open the floor. Oops, second. By Stevens, seconded by Lefebvre, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. All opposed, that passes unanimously. All right, the floor is now open. Uh, Ms. Nelson, if you care to speak, uh, please give your name and address for the record and then uh, we'll ask, be asking you some questions, but uh, I, I would like to just get a general comment from you as why you feel you, you need to uh, have this appeal listened to. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Cynthia Nelson. My address is 1023. North Chestnut Avenue, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54303. Okay. Um, the reason I appealed it is because same life that I have in the past. Um, I had sent in some copies of some of the programs that I have completed. Um, my last date of use of drugs was January 6th of 2018. And my last alcohol use was December of 2010, I think it was. It was much longer than, than the drug use. Um, I went through the Jackie Nitschke program and that's where like my foundation started. Um, I went through Libertas, um, intensive outpatient and aftercare progress to keep seeing um, Mr. William Labine for a while after that. Um, my mom helped me buy a home. So I have a home now just a few blocks away from the gas station where I would be working and need the beverage server's license for. Um, I'm an active member of the recovery community and I'm also on the Mandolin 5013C as a vice president, um, I, I have good solid foundation and roots here. And I just would like for that to be considered that I was able to change my life around and that I have a solid um, network of people. Okay. Sir uh, Alder Stevens. Yeah, I have a question. So 2018, it seems like everything had stopped. So what life-changing measures happened in 2018 that made you stop going down this path that you previously did? I ended up getting arrested on January 6th and I was in Florence County Jail and my probation officer had reached out to my counselor that I was seeing in Marinette, which was Bill Labine, because he traveled up there as well from Green Bay. And uh, Bill, my probation officer, and the doctor had came up for a plan with me. And at first, I was kind of opposed to it. I just wanted to sit my jail time and get out. And I had time to sit there and think, and there had to be a different way of life. Um, so I came down here to... Green Bay went through treatment and then when I sober living I was there for almost a year and then I went to the Jackie Nitschke two-person place and I just kind of started a lot 
life and this is what works for me. And, you know, my mom helped me buy a house here and I'm just not going back to my hometown because I don't know what would happen and I don't want to find out. So all I could do is keep excelling from where I am. I'm moving up the pole. Okay, my next question, I'm assuming there was fines and citations, has that all been paid? I am still paying on them. I pay on them every month. I, I have one completely paid off and I'm paying on the other ones and I pay it every month. Perfect, thank you. Okay, Father Lefebvre. Cindy, um, in your letter, you say you have a sponsor. Yes. Um, could they, I was wondering if we could make that condition that we get that letter, get a letter from your sponsor. Okay, I do have one from her, but it was like for the state of Michigan to try to get my driving license back. Okay. So I don't know if I could send that one in or if you would like, it's been done within the last three months. Alder Lefebvre, is there anybody else on this Zoom that would like to talk in her favor? No, if there is. Yeah, is there, yeah. Is there anyone uh, here? I don't think so. Although, right. I did, I did have a letter from, if I'm remembering the correct packet, I believe she had a letter from her employer. Um, right, the, her the, the attic. Oh, yes, I didn't I, we read see that. that. We read that. Yep. Okay. That's so from Bill. That's from Bill Macier. Right. Well, any any kind of letters that you have, that's always to your benefit. If if we're when we're looking over this, this type of thing, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm looking at the certificates you've got. You know, from Jackie Nitschke's center and uh, the attic. You also had a completion of a peer specialist. As a peer specialist, can you just explain that briefly? So a uh, peer support specialist is somebody that um, has lived experience of substance abuse and or mental health problems. And I work with other people that are like me and I give them support and resources and somebody to talk to and we work on their strengths rather than their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. they, they also mentioned that you had three felony convictions and Attorney Bunker, maybe you can help me on this. I found two, but was there, am I missing one somewhere? Um, I'd have to get my papers. Hold on. Well, I, I, I can ask Attorney Bunker too. It was, I just, for some reason, <laughs> I was only able to find three or two, I'm sorry, two, two. that were included in the memo. Um, right. I'm not sure if the police department, when they did their review, um, yeah. had additional information that I um, wasn't able to see. Um, that was that third one. Um, right. Lieutenant? There was a typo in the letter. Okay. Was there anything, Lieutenant Allen, that you could add to that? I went through the packet. Everything's out of Florence and O'Connell County. Um, and I think the only ones I saw were there was two. Yep. And they were drug related. That's what I saw. Yep. Okay. Well, that that's 33% less. So that, that does factor in, at least in my thought. Um, Alder Lefebvre. Um, yes, I wanted to ask. Cindy, did you say you work at the attic? I sure do for now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You did sound familiar voice. Um, I do... Um, I do know Cindy from uh, going to the attic. So I was wondering too, can I vote on this or is this, it's not a, um, I just know right. her, you know, business wise, but. As long as you've stated for the record that you have, um, or at least a familiarity um, with the appellate and so long mm -hmm. as um, it doesn't impact your ability to be impartial and fair um, on the decision, then you don't have to stay with it essentially a personal decision. for this but uh, I will say at the attic I know that she's a very good employee she's always very friendly and she's very helpful and she does her job well um, I would say that if she didn't I don't think they would keep her on if there was any problems so okay. well, I'm glad you brought that forward so um, Alder Stevens 
I would like to make a motion to close the floor. Okay. Second. Uh, second. Second, all in favor, please say so, aye. 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 All opposed, go ahead, Alder Stevens. Sure. So I would like to approve this. It looks like moving from Florence County has done wonders for her. And of course, Alder Lefebvre was talking about at the attic. So I would like to approve this. Go on, make that I'll motion. I'll second it. You make a motion and then second by Lefebvre. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. Uh, Cindy, this does go to city council. Uh, let's see, that would be June 1st. So it goes, it goes for final approval next Tuesday at six o'clock and that'll be a Zoom meeting. Uh, chances are it'll be fine. There's always a slim, slim chance that somebody might pull it, but I, I don't personally see that happening. But uh, congratulations, I think you're on the right track. and. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, with the certificates you brought forward and, and the letter from your employer, as well as the letter that Alder Lefebvre alluded to will really help. So we're, we're looking forward to you to being a positive force in our community. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Okay, you take care. All right, thank you. All right, item number five. Number five, consideration with possible action on the 2021-2022 renewal liquor licenses. Staff. Law department has an objection. Okay, police. No, that's the wrong one. I concur with law. All right, any other discussion by, uh, by, the, um, by our uh, committee? Otherwise, I would uh, entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Motion by Stevens, do we have a second? Second. Second by Lefebvre. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. Um, item Celestine, hmm? all of a sudden my, yes, uh, my protection policy, I don't have, all of a sudden my screen went blank and my protection policy, I don't have today's, all of a sudden it's gone. Might, I can't get you might it. Have to go back. You might have to go back to civic clerk, reopen it. Yes, I would. I would suggest um, exiting out of okay. that and then coming okay. back in. And, right. and you can always get on via the web too. You can see the. Um, you won't see board portal. You won't see all your um, the confidential documents, but you'll have some other documents. Okay, item number six. Number six, consideration with possible action on, on an application for the 2021-2022 license year, a class B combination license by Madrid, Madrid, Tapas and Wine Bar, LLC at 225 East Walnut Street with a licensed premises description as first floor of 225 dining bar area, courtyard and alleyway, currently licensed as an individual Amanda P Patterson staff. Yes, uh, staff has no objection. Um, however, we do want to note that the outdoor courtyard doesn't meet the fencing requirements of our outdoor premise ordinance. Uh, so a recommendation would be a motion to um, waive the requirements for an outdoor premise with respect to fence height and imperviousness and to approve as presented. Okay, police. We have no objections on it. Okay. Well, I know for a fact that that's a unique little setup in the back there, and I've, I've been over there occasionally to see it, and uh, um, it, it's kind of an in integral part of, the, of that establishment, and I, I think over time they've done a good job with that. So I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Oops, second. <laughs> you guys are close today. Alder Stevens, seconded by Lefebvre. All in, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. I don't know if Amanda is here, but congratulations, Amanda, and keep up the good work. All right, item number seven. Number seven, consideration with possible action on a class B combination license for Chef, Chef Bob, <laughs> sorry about that, LLC at 709 South Broadway with a licensed premises of two bar rooms Patio and storage room currently licensed as Rock and Billy's LLC staff. Yes. Um, so that is just for the 2020 2021 year. The renewal will be coming um, in the next um, meeting if they just didn't meet the deadline for the 15 day period to get full. Um, okay. It is 
the Broadway Moratorium. Um, however, it's taking over a currently licensed location, so it meets an exception. Um, this, this one is also going to re require a waiver of the requirements. They do have a fence um, and delineation, like a clear delineation of the uh, boundaries, but it's just not impervious or six feet. Um, so we need the waiver and approval for this one as well. Okay, I was going to ask real quickly, Attorney Bungard, is that something that uh, might need, need to be looked at by the establishment moving forward? Um, by the if, establishment, I because, don't think they get that waiver we are as staff um, and as a city we as part of our um, revamp of um, and revision to chapter 33 we are going to be addressing um, the uh, requirements for an outdoor premise as they don't seem to be fitting very well with um, functionality for uh, licensed establishments and these outdoor premises which now are becoming even more popular with um, uh, with pandemic um, so um, that is going to be addressed, but for the time being, in order to be in compliance with our ordinance, we just want to make sure that we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's and, and getting in the record that these establishments are having a waiver of, of the requirements and are able to move forward as presented. So as we move forward with this, that we might have to maybe relook at this coming, going down the line. I mean, with the pandemic and all, and people are doing more outdoor events, are you seeing that we might have to look at our code or anything? No, once it's approved, it, 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 um, it's good to move forward with. Okay. All right, police. Uh, we have no objections of concurrent law. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve with the waiver. Okay. By Stevens, do we have a second? Second by Lefebvre. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, that passes unanimously. Again, this goes to City Council on June 1st. Everything that we've approved tonight. For final approval by city council all right i Thank remember you. seven uh eight eight yeah eight. eight okay here we go consideration with possible action on an application for a class b combination license for basil one llc at 1423 south broadway with a license premises as one story bar kitchen, ladies and men's restroom, small office, locked storage room, basement, outdoor bar, pool room, currently licensed as Chenmina LLC staff. Yes, uh, law department is still objection. Uh, this is also just to note, it's in the Broadway moratorium, but meets an exception as it's taking over a currently licensed uh, space. Um, and this will also require a waiver of the outdoor premise requirements. Again, they do have a fence um, and it's sufficient for um, delineating the borders of the premise. It's just not impervious or six, six feet in height. I believe it's, it appears to be about five feet. Okay, police. Police have no objection to concur with law. All right. Motion to approve with the waiver. Okay, by Second. Stevens, seconded by Lefebvre. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. I have a question as a waiver. If we've done this previously, do we need to continue doing this every year? Um, if they, for the renewal, um, yeah, just to ensure that there isn't any kind of change. Um, but what happens if you renew and you have no changes from your premise description from the year prior, we don't actually have to do a waiver every time it just gets renewed based on whatever was approved originally, if that makes okay. sense. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, all right. I, was, I was wondering if we should look at the ordinance where it says six feet, maybe we should have a, you know, say it has to be six feet to, five or four feet, you know, something right. in there. And it depends, it'll have to be worded something like maybe the six feet is warranted where the location is or, you know, something like that. We might have to look at that because yeah, we are doing a lot of waivers on this. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, right. That is something that we're finding and, and staff is working, um, law department is, is working with inspections, particularly just so that um, the type um, in general are being consistently applied. Um, between businesses and residences and things like that. So that is something we, we are looking at. It's, it's on okay. the to-do list. Yeah. Okay. 
you know, we have another agenda item too, uh, uh, talking about the municipal code. Is any of that dealt with in, in that, with the, with the changes? Not necessarily, no. Uh, uh, but city attorney Chavez. Um, All right. More okay, detail. just that I'd ask. Okay. Yep. All right. All right, so we vote. We voted, didn't we, on that? Yes, we're all set with number eight. Um, we are on to item number nine. I think we just did nine, didn't we? No, so nine is the renewal application. Okay, there we go. They have so, coming up. All right. Okay. Twenty 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 one year, and then they're just applying for their renewal right away. All right. Thank you. Consideration with possible action on a renewal application for a Class B combination license for Basel 1 LLC at 1423 South Broadway, subject to the approval of the original application at the June 1st Common Council meeting. Staff? Oops. Uh, staff has no objection. Please? No objection. Make a motion. <laughs> all right. All the little favor. Seconded by Stevens. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 No call opposed, that passes unanimously. All right, item number 10. Number 10, for consideration and possible action on the creation of an ad hoc committee to assess the feasibility and necess necessity of a unified municipal building to include city hall, police, fire, and municipal court. The committee should be comprised of all relevant city department heads of, of or their designates mayor's office, city council members, and community members at large to fill expertise gaps. Items under consideration should include, but not limited to, site selection and property acquisition, cost analysis, including proposed expenditures in the five-year capital improvement plan, disposition of existing real estate, departmental and facility requirements, and improved customer service experience, Alder Johnson, Brought that forward, and Alder Johnson, you are there. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Alder Sawyer. That sorry, that was a mouthful there for you to read. That sure was. I, I got it <laughs> almost good. <laughs> but I was trying to be, you know, very transparent with what it is that I'm trying to achieve. So essentially, what I'm asking of the committee is to support the creation of an ad hoc committee, uh, as stated in the motion, to explore the. Uh, the pros and cons, if you will, of unified municipal services building. What really prompted this is two things. One is um, the work that was done almost five years ago now uh, around um, the, the needs of a public safety building, police department headquarters. Um, and, and of course, as we all know that there was some work that was put into that, a consultant was hired for, I don't know, thirty, forty thousand um, dollars $40,000. We had a report um, and then nothing's really been done on that issue since. Uh, the secondary part of this conversation is really what I saw um, in my work with the finance committee and in our five-year capital improvement plan, um, renovations being proposed to uh, the police department and more substantially to city hall, uh, total approximately $10.4 million over the next five years. Uh, that, that is a big chunk of money in renovations. Um, and, and when you see that type of investment, recognizing that there, you know, are other major um, capital improvements needed within our, our community, particularly to facilities, I just think it's a good time to pull together the right stakeholders to have a long term conversation about that, that police building and whether or not um, City Hall could potentially be combined with it. Um, you know, there are some general thoughts they have uh, that could be can contributed at the committee level in terms of what that development would look like. Um, but whenever you're talking again about $10 million of investment that could potentially serve as a down payment on a new facility, I just think it's worthwhile perhaps to have a committee come together with the various stakeholders, areas of expertise, um, including finance, including community and economic development, because they can obviously help with site selection and, and putting together um, real estate transaction deals that might need to happen. Obviously, um, uh, your police and fire are really critical to that conversation, someone from the mayor's office. Um, I, I also suggested a couple of alders. Um, I think of it very similarly to the elections ad hoc committee, which I thought was uh, did some really great work and, and, and was very functional because there was a good cross section of representation on there. Uh, and then I would also encourage us to consider uh, a couple of ad hoc or excuse me, at large um, community members who have who have background and expertise in these types of of uh, uh, projects. 
So that is my request before the committee. Hold on the fair. You want to keep this downtown. So where I, I really have a problem with this. How are you going to find a big enough there is no building. I don't think that's going to be big enough for all this to combine it. And uh, City Hall is itself, you could expand out to the parking lot, but then where's the parking? Um, I find this is going to be, a, I think it's going to be a problem. I mean, you, you can have an ad hoc committee, but where are they going to find a big enough space to combine all these offices, all this together? I think that's going to be our problem because downtown there aren't big open areas or old buildings that can be converted anymore because you know other businesses have moved in some of these buildings. So I don't know. I mean, if they can come up with something viable, yeah, I'd definitely look at it. But I find, yeah, I just I just have questions on you know the size that this would have to be. Yeah, and I think it's premature to to answer that question, Alder Lefebvre. Mm -hmm. um, now that said, I, I I'll tell you, I think the easy answer is the existing site of the police department. But I think, you know, that that is one thing that I would expect the committee to explore. Uh, so as I as I stated, and I was very intentional about this in the communication was was partially to include the necessity of this. It may not be necessary. This committee could go through the amount of work that it needs to go through and determine that, you know what, this isn't the way to go. But I think if we're going to spend $10 million of taxpayer money on renovating City Hall, we ought to at least give um, every alternative a look to ensure that we're prudently investing that money. Alder Gerlach. Thank you. I would just like to uh, thank Alder Johnson for this. I think that this is very, a very smart move. Um, I think Alder Johnson knows, I believe very much in foresight and um, planning ahead. And even if this never comes to pass, the smart thing is to be thinking about it and looking into it now. I think he's got a good idea, a good, a good understanding of what needs to be done. I think he's the right person to be bringing this forward. I will support this at council. I don't know where he's going to put it or the committee is going to put it or if we're going to need it. But I really, really believe in looking into these things before the roof comes crashing in and you have to do something quickly. So I, thank you. And, and I, I would hope that the committee would, would support this. I think the timing is very good on this too. I think uh, Alder Johnson bringing this forward is good considering that we have the five-year capital improvement program that's out there now. We really haven't had that tool in the past. Now we have something that we can at least look at over a period of time and try to incorporate some of these other things into it. And again, this is a plan per se, uh, an ad hoc committee and plans do come to fruition sometimes and sometimes they don't. But I think you got to look like Alder Gerlach said, you have to look forward and try to come up with some solutions. I always was looking at some of the older buildings in the downtown area and re repurposing those if possible. And I know that last report that came out a few years ago kind of talked about that a little bit. We didn't really go very far with it, but I think the straw maybe that broke the camel's back on this is the $10 million that we're talking about upgrading City Hall. And that building is 66 years old. Um, you know, it's not the oldest building on earth, but it's had its issues with infrastructure. You know, I worked there 25 years and I can attest to that. So I think, you know, I, I, I don't know if the committee has anything else to say, but I, I really feel that uh, bringing this forward is a good thing. Uh, Alder Johnson, I was just gonna ask, um, are you looking for the committee to help choose some of these folks? Or are you looking to, uh, do you have some names in mind? What, what's your thought process as far as that goes? Because I think the committee is willing to work with you on this. Yeah, th th thanks for asking the question, Alder Sawyer. Um, I would envision that this would function very similarly to what the elections ad hoc committee did. And it would be my recommendation that um, the mayor simply appoint the individuals to the committee that make the most sense. Um, that to me is the role of the executive branch. Um, and and I, I have no doubt the mayor can, can come up with some qualified people that can help move that forward. That's fine with me, Alder Lefebvre. So then you would want a motion to, uh, let's see what it'd be, have the mayor uh, establish an ad hoc committee? So the motion, yes, the motion would be to approve um, with 
the to establish the ad hoc committee members to be appointed um, at the at the mayor. Um, and then one other recommendation that I would chime in, I believe this um, ad hoc committee should report out to finance as elections mm -hmm. did um, because of the fiscal impact that mm -hmm. it would have. Um, it would sure. um, most reasonably mm -hmm. could be reporting to finance and then finance to council. Okay. That's that's right. Attorney Bunker, I, I, have, my a, motion. I have a question <laughs> for Brian. Uh, go ahead, Alder Stevens. You have city council members. How many members are you thinking about from city council? Yeah, and I was actually going to just ask that question of attorney Bunger. Can can this committee specify the composition of that committee? Yes, it can specify it in any way. Yeah. Okay. So so it, uh, Alder Stevens, I think I, I mean to me, two members of city council seem to work well for the ad hoc elections committee and for something of this scope. I, I personally think two would be sufficient where you're going to get, you know, where the greater area of expertise is probably going to come, I think is from um, impacted city department directors, as well as community members who really have their arms around these types of topics. Mm -hmm. Although Stevens, do you have some ideas? I do. I have. I do. Yeah. I, I would like to be one of those members. And I think yeah. Ryan Johnson should be one for sure. So I, I was thinking um, of the Gar Garlock as well. I also feel like we should have more community members than city council members, because you know this is becoming part of the community. They more community members need to be involved to make this type of decision. So, okay. well, I, you know, my thought would be okay. Some names are brought forward. I don't know if we have to really specifically mention the names because there's a few other alders that are not on this call who might like to get involved. So. My feeling would be that if we get this to the mayor, the mayor could reach out and find out people that he would like to see on this on this committee. And My suggestion, members, find out which members would like to sit on this and do a lottery, and then the name that's picked, that's the person that's going to be on it. You know, okay. then it's not in the mayor. Then the mayor doesn't have to decide which council member. So should no? so then we so we do should uh, in a motion that we should set the the amount of uh, converse, the number in the motion? That can be done. So if, at, at this point in my notes, I have with at least two. So if you want to increase that, um, it can always, if there's you know less interest than there are slots, um, the way that the motion is, is situated and obviously it can get amended um, on the floor at council. Um, it oh. will allow at least a certain amount of, um, so you can set uh, a limit um, and a minimum or just um, whatever. So a minimum of two and well, no I guess, more, I guess no my more question. Three. No more than three. Are, yeah, go ahead. I guess, shouldn't we determine how many members we would like to sit as a whole? I would, I would suggest minimum of two and no more than three, so. No, 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 I meant citizens, departments, oh, so the mayor's representative. Well, I think you know, are we good. doing that's nine, good. 12, five? <laughs> I would say an odd number seems to work, you know, when you vote. Alder Brian, Garlock. any suggestions? Yeah, Alder Gerlach, I mean, she's got an idea. I suggest you ask Alder Johnson what he has in mind. <laughs> so, Alder Johnson, what do you have in mind? Yeah, I mean, you can obviously overcomplicate an initiative out of the shoot. And I think it's important to recognize that this is really more of an exploratory committee. And at some point, um, if and when, you know, something becomes sticky or tangible coming out of this, um, it really changes the composition of, of what you're doing. Uh, but I think for this initial process, to me, two alders seems to be sufficient you know, maybe four to five members of, of the public who really, again, recognize, understand the complexities of putting together something this complex and appropriate department heads. And I would personally be comfortable with deferring to the mayor on appropriate, but I would, but I would urge and think that appropriate would be um, Parks Department, City Hall. Uh, I would think Public Works for obvious reasons. I would think community and economic development because as I alluded to, site selection, development agreements, uh, all of that stuff. And then police in, in fire. Um, you know, I've gotten some input from municipal court already. You know, if you want to include them, probably wouldn't hurt to have them at the table 
if you're going to contemplate having that included. Um, you know, I would defer to law. I, I don't know if it would be necessary this stage in the game, but maybe, I mean, someone's got to be represented there. And of course, someone from the mayor's office. So, I mean, already, right? I mean, you start adding those numbers up, <laughs> you're starting to get a big group. Um, but Brian, wouldn't say the mayor's office, police and fire, wouldn't they be considered part of staff members and they would be associated to it, but don't sit on that board? Well, I don't know that there's any really, you know, binding decision authority that you're granting to this group anyway. I mean, this is really about just having the, the right brains at the table to really kind of flesh out the, the concept and whether or not it makes sense uh, for the taxpayers of Green Bay. So uh, part of that conversation as well, which was written into um, was written into my communication was acknowledging and recognizing um, that whenever you're, you're talking about the construction of a new facility, it's, it's the opportunity for us to streamline the way that we interact with the, I think if you talk to anybody right now, if you go to city hall, the way that it's laid out, no fault of anyone's it's, it's very cumbersome to someone who visits city hall, right? You go there and you're like, Oh, you got to go to six for that fourth of that and second for that. And we just chase people all over. And I've seen other committees or excuse me, other communities They've done a really good job. Uh, there's one community in particular where they built a new city hall to streamline a better user experience for the residents in their community. And it did wonders for them. And so I think, you know, to have the right representatives at city hall to be able to, to talk us through that process and understand that certainly there's dollars and cents discussion to be had. Um, but there's also the, the user experience discussion that needs to be had as well. I 100% agree with you. Yes. <laughs> And I would also, you know, point out, guys, I mean, when we talk about when we passed the, the directive to do this five-year capital improvement plan, this is exactly right what we were, I mean, this is one of the outcomes, the side effects you're looking to achieve. It's, it's when you can see things five years out and you can start to recognize opportunities to make different types of investments. And, and, and so that's partly, you know, the, it, it's because of the capital improvement plan. I think that the council has afforded the vision to recognize that. Um, there might be a different path that makes more sense for us when it comes to facility management. Makes sense. All right. Um, okay, so now the motion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. Okay, let's work through this I motion. Think we, I think we all agree that this is a good thing. So we just have to just come up with the right motion. And mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Alder, at this point what we have is um, to include appointees as selected by the mayor with at least two city council members, a mayor's office representative, four to five community members, and appropriate city department to report out to the finance or yeah, the finance committee. Does that sound good, Alder Johnson? Yeah, and I, I think I might have missed it before, but I think finance is really important at the table, like probably the most important to have at the table. Well, that's part of the departments that you're mentioned, right? right? Yeah, and if, if uh, to Attorney Bungert's point, if if this reports out to finance, I would imagine that finance would be the staff appointed uh, to the ad hoc committee. Uh, would that and seem to make sense? That, that would make sense, yeah. Okay. And you could have somebody from Parks and DPW. So that I think that's understood as as you brought forward. So I, th I think that'll all come forward. Is that motion good enough? Do you feel good? Okay, Who wants to bring that forward? The all, that's all the motion. Save? Okay, you bring that forward. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Stevens. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimously. Thank you, Alder Johnson. All right. Item number 11. Number 11, consideration with possible action on general ordinance number 4-21, adopting and enacting a new Green Bay Municipal Code. Quite a lengthy thing. I tried to read every word. <laughs> Took a while. Uh, staff. Uh, thank you, Alder. I would actually recommend that we take up items. Or do you want to take it individually? 12 and 13 together. 12 and 13? 11, 12, and 13. Okay. Uh, will, will somebody bring a motion to that effect? Motion to bring them forward together. Second. 11, 12, and 13. Seconded by Lefebvre. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Do I need to read each one of those individually? Attorney Bunger? Um, no, I, I think it's... Understood. 
Okay, so I read I read eleven, so twelve and thirteen will follow suit. Perfect. Okay, uh, were you saying something to the effect that we're going to split hairs and go, you know, area by area, or <clears throat> I, I was looking at general questions, you know, just general, you know, like fees, you know, how how much have they increased over time, and you know, things on that order. You know, maybe some, you know, some of the players that were involved in all this, I know a law department was as well, but I would think that each of the departments that are involved in this would have representation and they would have brought things forward as well. And, and I know this has been going on for a while. So I don't know, Attorney Chavez, you're there as well. I'd like to know how long the process has taken from beginning to end, because I know this has been going on for a while. So we originally talked about this in 2017. And the codification um, is finally to the point where you guys get to adopt it. And this has been a very eye-opening process for us because it, it was able, it enabled us to have um, the entire code review to identify where there are issues. So with that, we've identified a number of ordinances that ultimately need to be brought back to the council for revisions. But that's not what we're doing today. What we're doing today is literally just bringing the code back up to compliance with existing standards and recodifying it to make it much easier for the community to um, not only review, but also to search and, and make it more user-friendly. So now we have, in, in the email that I sent you guys um, providing the original documents, um, one of the things we identified was before we had animal, things pertaining to animals split up in numerous uh, code sections. Now they are going to be entered into one code section, so you have dog licenses, you have um, dangerous dogs, you have um, you know, anything pertaining to keeping of animals will all be in one section, regardless of whether or not it's um, pertaining to something else. The so licensing of animals will fall under one section. Same thing with business licenses. So this will ultimately make it easier for people to find what they're looking for. Um, and then it makes it a much more searchable user-friendly format. It also finally allows us to have a completely updated code on the website. What we've had in between when we started this and now is a, we got the, the code digitized, turned into a format that was um, searchable, but then as we were doing the recodification, we couldn't do, add the amendments without incurring um, unnecessary expenses. So the amendments were showing up on the, website, but they weren't showing up as part of the text itself. You had to actually go look at the amendment. So you could find it, it was on the website, but you, you couldn't see it when you would just do your search. So now all, all of that, thing, we're, we're gonna have things cleaned up. From here on out, it will be um, updated, I think on a monthly basis. So if there are amendments to that, they will show up in what it, what's called the word bank. And so it will link to those only until it's actually, um, Recodified, and like I said, that's happening every month to hopefully keep up with the with the uh, amendments that are coming through from council. So the reason I asked all three of these things come at once is because one of the things we brought forward was pulling all of those fees out of the ordinances and putting them into a resolution. The resolution, the intent with that is to bring it for the council to review with the budget to set the fees. So what we have done right now is pulled everything out. We used existing fees, and then we also contacted the departments and asked them if, the, if these fees were still, uh, or if the numbers have changed, whatever. And so what is presented to you is a um, recommendation thus far from, from staff. You'll note that there are a number of them that are zero, the reason being that we don't, or we don't have those um, licenses or permits or Something could be that it has been taken over as something the county does, but it still shows up in our ordinances. So again, those are things that we will ultimately be asking to uh, revise. But at this point, because we were trying to keep it intact and just get you guys something that you could um, adopt, we didn't tackle those. So we just made them clean. So the fee schedule. Um, and we're, what pages are those on again? Because it's such a long document. I just... I'm the trying to call schedule is a separate resolution. So if you look at oh. the, um, the Can proposed- you, Did you want to share the screen at all and talk about some of that? That might help. Here, let me pull it up. 
I'm trying to dig stuff out too, but it's you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a long one. Kathy's gonna read it tonight. The I read some of it. I did already. <laughs> I went through it like. <laughs> Um, I am not able to screen share the husband. To oh, see you're him. not. Okay. Can you tell me what pages those are on, on again? I'm, I'm just trying to. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. It, the page is 1043. Okay. Way down. And if you actually go to item 13, it's separated out. Correct. And you All guys right. received a separate version of it today. There was one um, revision that was noted that needed to be corrected. And so that item, and it was a fire department one. So that is the one item that um, just, that, that's why there's a revision that you guys were presented today. Um, and so. Well, I, I went to 1043. I, <clears throat> there was like literally a, a spreadsheet, several spreadsheets with, with all of, and I, I'm just trying to find that again. That's that's not 1,043. Maybe it's toward the bottom. Oh, here we go. About 1177. You know, more more done in that neck of the woods. It is a very long code. Yeah, there's a fee the fee schedule. It looks like it starts. Uh, looks like it starts at 11 or 1176. So anyway, I know that it's several pages long. So I'm, I'm just looking at that generally. And without comparing apples and oranges or apples and apples, you know, to the old, you know, former fee schedule, is there a, was there a general trend? Generally speaking, you would think that, you know, fees would go up somehow, some percentage. I don't know if numerous ones of these have stayed the same. Has anything gone down or is it all, is everything gone up in your estimation, Attorney Chavez? Right now, for the most part, is staying consistent with what has already been done. There are a few that have gone up. I believe that um, the police department is able to speak to those ones that are going up. Um, okay. For example, the alarm user permit fee is going up by $5 for uh, residential and non-residential is going to 40. Um, that's going up from, that one's going up $10. Um, then there's a false alarm, third and subsequent false hold up alarms is going up $50. Um, fifth and subsequent okay. false alarms is going up $50. Um, so it's going from 75 to 125? Um, so, if you are looking at 10-741, the alarm user permit fee, um, the first one is going from 15 to 20. The second I one is going from 30 to I 20. looked at the wrong thing. And then 10-742, um, the 300 is going to 350. The 300 is going to 350 on each one of those. And then there's a 175 that's going to 225 on two of those. So those are the types of revisions that are- is there is there a way, you know, I know I don't want to cause a lot more work on this, but is there a way to let council know <clears throat> where some of those increases have incurred? If, like you said, it's not wholesale. Is there a way to let us know what those increases have been? I mean, or do we have to sit there and try to dig it all out? Look, looking okay. at all this. We can tell you, I can actually tell you there are only I'm just so saying in addition you... to those ones, there's the fireworks fee. That one's going up a hundred dollars right well like i said if you know we have all this verbal you're talking to us verbally is there a way that we can you know uh some kind of a document or a spreadsheet or something just stating okay we've had 30 increases da 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 you know five dollars here ten dollars there is that is that inventing too much work nope we already have that for the most part that's kind of what okay. i'm looking at all right. um, but would, those are literally the only revisions to what is currently existing. And that would be fine, even if they're, you know, just so that we know that we don't have to look through all of all these pages and really kind of dig that out. I noticed that there's a lot of them that are zero, uh, you know, with the bar uh, tavern licenses and such. Is that partly because of the pandemic? You know, I know that we, um, we waived a lot of these things. Can you explain that a little bit? Most of these are because they are governed, they are no longer governed by the city. So the concessions oh. and whatnot, those are all governed by the county. 
Um, some of them are governed by the state. So those are, those are ones that we're ultimately looking to pull out. We just, as I okay. said, we're trying to get you this as quickly as possible. So those weren't right. tired. Well, I, first of all, thank you for all the work. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, we're, we're trying to streamline things as much as possible. And I, you know, many times when trying to understand it ourselves and then trying to tell our citizens as well. So I thank you and your department and whoever else uh, was involved in this for all the work that they did on this. I do have a question. Go ahead, Alder Stevens. So before we get to questions, can I just tell you the reason we're taking the other one, the video licensing fees? Video. Sure. The reason we have taken up three of these at one time, the video cable, it's what used to be the cable franchise fees. The cable franchise fee is no longer allowed. Uh, I'm sorry, it's no longer something that we're able to govern. Um, we just aren't able to, to, to grant franchises. So in order to bring that up to code, we just had to strike the whole thing. But in order for us to still get our 1%, um, because now it's governed by the um, by the state and then the state gives us our cut um, in order for us to get our full percentage we have to actually have something in place saying that we want this so just to make sure that we work to create a gap that's why we are doing this at the same time um, and it's literally just taking out what's obsolete and keeping what's still intact okay all right alder stevens you had the, a question uh, yeah i may not have caught it why is why do we have an increase on these fees? They were recommended by the department. The department, and it's just, yeah, it's just those those handful of them. These are all numbers that came from the department. So we compiled them, and then we asked the departments to verify for the num verify the numbers. Um, and then if there were increases, those were coming from them. All right. So I'm just looking at the false alarms for alarm systems. So that came from the police department. Correct. So is this possible to get something by council on Tuesday or not? Yes. If that could be part of the packet, I, I just, it would help, I think for all of us to at least have that information. Sure. Thank you. Committee, anything else or <laughs> police? I was gonna ask, um, you know, police, as far as your input on this too, obviously there are some increases here and uh, I don't know if Lieutenant, you can talk to any of that. As far as the alarm one, I know we do go on uh, quite a few uh, false alarms, um, and I think that um, that was part of the increase for the amount of man hours we go into. Uh, we do go to alarms, mostly false alarms, not the legit ones. So, I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. So, Lieutenant Allen, do you know approximately how many false alarms we do a year? I don't have that um, on me really available, but I can get that. I can forward that to you. Because it looks like, I don't know what, I'm looking at one here, you know, 50 bucks for the second, third, 75. And then the fourth on, it goes to 125 to 225. So, you know, they're also taxpayers. So mm -hmm. kind of interested why there's a $50 increase, almost $125. Yeah, I'm not sure what the reason is, but I know there are some some businesses that, you know, hopefully that they can uh, call their alarm company and get some of that uh, equipment fixed. If so if I, that's the case, wouldn't they be more be a nuisance property then? Um, I don't know that would be a nuisance property for a, a mechanical issue. It's not really creating a, a nuisance to the public. Not so much a nuisance to us. We'll still respond to it, but a lot of times when we do go to alarm calls, we'll talk to the owner and make suggestions that, yeah, it looks like this piece of equipment might be not functioning property, properly, or you go into some of these businesses that have placards hanging from the ceiling, and especially in the summer and the winter, when you got the air conditioning and the heat blowing around in there, sometimes it moves those things enough to trigger an alarm. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're, we're real good about going to these businesses and then pointing out that, hey, you know, this or that may be the uh, thing that's triggering your alarm. So, you know, suggest that we move it here or there. I don't think there's, there's I don't think there's been too many that we've had to go down that road with. Well, thanks for clarifying. So, yeah. So some of this is just to kind of cover some of the cost, man hours, so to speak, of going out there. And otherwise it comes out of your budget. 
that's my thought. Anyway, um, committee, anything else uh, for the police or that? I, like I said, I'm very thankful that this has been brought forward. It's been a long time coming. Um, Attorney Chavez, I, can I, can you just let me know? I, I suppose each department had their input in it, you know, as much as possible. So I don't know if there was a subcommittee of sorts, or if you just would appeal to inspection or police, whoever it may be to have them give their input to you to uh, continue. I'm sorry, can you, I mean, do you mean on the fee schedule? Well, not so much the fee schedule. I'm just saying the departments that uh, weighed in on this. I would think that any of the departments that are involved at all in this would have brought in uh, their people and talk about improvements and that, and you would you would work along with them to recodify, if you will. Does so the, recod sense? the recodification was really more an issue of reorganization and um, creating user friendliness. So and then doing a, a legal review of, of things that are, are obsolete. So in the process, we've identified a number of things that we're working with the departments on moving forward. Um, and then everybody's been instrumental. So when we've told them that we're planning on making revisions, um, figuring out where, where the cutoff is gonna be as far as like bringing ordinances so we don't have any um, conflicting numbers coming out of the recodification. Um, and then also identifying the timeline for things and then there were a couple of things with PPW that we, we felt were important to bring forward before we got the um, recodification in place. So this is not supposed to be necessarily a substantive change. Those will still be coming to you. Um, this really just makes the, the, the code easier for the public to understand and, and gets rid of all those inconsistency, all those um, references to statutes that don't exist anymore, um, gets out any references to other parts of the, the code that have been amended. Um, it really just cleans up our code and gets it into a, into a nice spot for us to be able to, to work from here on out. Okay. All right, uh, committee, do you have any other questions? Otherwise, what a motion to approve. approve. Okay. Sounds like a, a deal, motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Lefebvre. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And again, all their, uh, our uh, attorney Chavez, just maybe something just to kind of let council know where some of the changes were. And and even if it's in our in this document document here, it would be nice just to even have a paragraph stating, okay, we, we work on this over a th two year period, three year period, and maybe just a couple of bullet points as far as you know, what, what the uh, advantages were to, to doing this. And I know some of it is common sense, you know, that we all, you know, we kind of follow that, but, you know, sometimes we need a little guidance. <laughs> so if that, is that something that you would consider as well? Okay, the, I already sent you guys the um, fee schedule with the markup so you guys can see what changes are being made. Okay. And I'm happy okay. to add any additional okay. information. We're just really excited right. to have this one finally done. Yes. All right. Thank you. That, That's a big job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for all your work. You. So, all right. Thank you again. So we can move forward when we're ready. All right. Item number 14. 14. Consideration with possible action on general ordinance number 13-21 creating section 2-32 Green Bay Municipal Code relating to remote attendance at meetings. Staff. This one's me again. Um, so we have been operating um, under our emergency orders and then under the pandemic conditions to be um, attending remotely. Now that the pandemic conditions are easing up such that we are able to gather in, in public spaces, at least to a limited degree, um, in order to continue to have virtual attendance, the city needs to have an ordinance in place allowing for that. So this is what is being presented to you all. Um, I will say that in order to, to stay compliant, we really should adopt this on a first reading. Um, actually, that's true for the um, recodification as well, but I can deal with that at council. But this should be adopted on a first reading if we intend to continue doing this, doing this at um, for the summer meetings. And this is at any city building or just city hall? 
this allows for employees, council, committee members, members of the public, anybody to attend council meetings virtually. So it basically allows us to continue doing these Zoom meetings in addition to doing the on-site. So anytime we're gonna do hybrid, anytime there's not gonna be somebody physically in the, in the building, if we wanna do a use of the live feeds or the Zoom meetings, this is, the, this is what we need to have in place to do it. What we do have on, on the ordinance right now is the sunset, sunset provision for December 31st of this year. Um, I don't know if the council is uh, ready to entertain go into this process completely. So this gives us an opportunity to address it. Otherwise, you guys can always take it out and adopt it as a permanent solution. Well, you know, it's, yeah, go ahead, Alter Stevens. So, Attorney Chavez, question for you, because I know there was talk previously about doing remote and some of us being out of state and some in state. Did you by chance look at that? Are we, this ordinance or this, what we're planning on doing, does that allow us to say be in Michigan and call in to be a voting member? Or does it, do we need to be physically in Wisconsin? I've not had a chance to look at that, but generally the idea is that you have to be present in order to discharge your duties. But that idea of present has changed, you know, in, the time of when the framers were creating all these different rules, you know, you couldn't conduct business from a town to, you know, two hours away when the only way to, to interact was by courier mail or, you know, there was, you know, there weren't the, the means available to us. So I think that now that the, we're moving to a virtual environment, there's definitely an argument for it to be said that as long as you're able to provide representation, that's definitely an option. Um, but you know, it is one thing that we do need to look at. But either way, like if you guys want to be able to attend um, from home, this is the only, the only way that we can continue to do it. I just wanna make sure that we're okay if we're in Arizona or Illinois or Michigan, you know, so and we're calling it. I, I chimed in from New Mexico, so I, that's something that we need to really figure that out. Alder Stevens, can Alder Lafave, do you have? Alder Lafave. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's something maybe should be uh, put in here that, right, because then somebody could decide, oh, I'm going to take the next three, four months and I'm going to go on vacation somewhere and I'm going to be, uh, I'm not even going to be in the district. I think there has to be some rule like you know alder Stoyer was one time he was gone one time um, just right once. that he was allowed to do that it has to be you can't be doing this month after month because then you're not here really taking care of your district so i think there's got to be some some kind of wording in there i think uh, the law department maybe can look you know look into that and see how can you word that where um i i know say say I have a brother in North Carolina, say something happened to him, he was in the hospital and he dies, I would want to go to his funeral. And because the council is usually two times a month or so, it could be possible I'd be down there, but there might be something that I really need to be at the council meeting, some vote or something that I would really want to be. Now that would be an exception, I would think, you know, that could be part of the rule because those are unavoidable. Those aren't, when people do vacations, that sh I don't know if that can be put in there. I don't, there's, I know the county we talked about this too, and they just they would not. Um, they said you know we're all going to be in person. We're not going to do any more um, Zoom or whatever which one we do. Um, it's going to have to be in person, and they're not going to make any exceptions for anything. Mm. So, I think there's sometimes there has to be some exceptions made, and we do have so the ability. You know, with, with the Zoom now, it works and it seems to work fine, uh, but we don't want people abusing it. That's all the fave. I think Attorney Chavez has some homework to do for us. We're <laughs> <laughs> putting more on her. I'm sorry. But, but I also, but I think that we should move forward with what we currently have in front of us. But I think yeah. Attorney Sheva should figure out the state line if it's good. So. Yeah. Well, what I would well. recommend at this point then is to adopt it with the sunset provision because then the opportunity for somebody to abuse it goes way down. 
because it's only through the end of the year that's only six months. And that's really the extent of the pandemic. So you guys have an opportunity to see whether or not there are, now that the restrictions are being lifted, um, and now that people are able to travel more, whether or not it is something that is useful or if it's becoming a problem. So I, I think that that's an appropriate middle ground um, until we're able to, to really decide what you guys want to do. On Can that sunset clause be amended? I mean, uh, if something comes up in October that changes things, we can look at it then, correct? Correct. All right. I'll well, make I the move motion. motion. I would suggest to move forward. Alder Gerlach? I was just wondering, um, I, I don't know, does it make sense to have a sunset or does it make sense to pass it without a sunset date and um, just require that it be re-examined at a certain time? I mean, when I read that there's that it sunsets at the end of this year, I thought it might still have something to do with COVID. So um, I, I don't understand the difference. So once something is adopted the books um, until it's brought up again. So the council could ultimately say that they want to have it revisited, um, but it's on the books. There is no, you would have to essentially um, act to amend it or repeal it. Um, whereas with the sunset provision, it has a built-in expiration date, which means that mm -hmm. it has to be dealt with before then. So the purpose of having a sunset clause is to not let it, in other words, it seems to me like you're saying, this will, this should probably not be our policy going forward. The reason we added a sunset clause is because this is new for the city. We don't really know how it's going to work. And so rather than committing the city to um, this on a permanent basis, it's really like, okay, let's see if we just need it to get us through, um, you know, until the restrictions are all the way gone, until COVID's completely under control. Um, or if it is something that the city ultimately wants to adopt. Okay, thanks. Alder Lefebvre. Uh, and then we, we the city itself paid for the Zoom, right? And that does that go to the end of the year, the contract? Um, I believe that's a question for Clerk Jeffries. But I do know you can either pay on an annual basis or a monthly basis. Okay. Yes, thank you, Attorney Chavez. The The account that, um, there are several accounts in City Hall. The one that has the uh, ability to have 500 participants, um, that is the account that I had created. And we paid for that through the end of the year, the calendar year. Okay. I think the fact that we can possibly change that sunset clause, you know, moving forward as, as things change is a good thing. So I, I have no problem with it. Committee, do you have any, uh, want to bring anything forward? I'm happy the way it is. Okay, do you want to bring that forward as a motion? Yeah, motion to approve. Okay, by Second. Steven. Seconded by Lefebvre. Any other discussion all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, all opposed? Okay, thank you for the work on that as well. Oops. All right, item number 15. Okay, number 15. For consideration of possible action public records notice in accordance with Wisconsin State Statute 19.34 sub, subset 1 to reflect current reproduction and copy costs as well as designated record custodians, staff. Yes. Um, so as we were having a staff was having discussions with respect to um, updating the fee schedule. Um, there is a separate um, fee schedule um, and notice that is required under uh, open records laws under our statute. Um, and that requires uh, um, an authority or the city of Green Bay as a records custodian to identify who the um, persons are that to whom um, records requests should be submitted to. Um, what the process is for submitting a records request, how you go about doing so, um, and um, what those um, expected or estimated fees would be for copies, for flash drive, for um, color copies, um, for example. Um, and that has not been updated for several years. Um, and in addition, um, in the last uh, year or so, 
the uh, Wisconsin Attorney General's Office for Open Government did uh, give out additional guidance regarding what are appropriate um, and how reproduction costs are supposed to be calculated, um, which um, put our old fees out of line with permissible under law. Um, so according, we recalculated those fees, actual cost of staff time with respect to obtaining ink and paper, uh, with respect to paper costs and ink costs, and then the actual digital medium costs, um, such as flash drives. So taking all that, um, we're presenting the new, um, the new fees um, for approval, and then that notice has to be adopted by council. So that's why it's in front of the committee this evening. How much, oh, real, hold on a second, a little faith. Uh, how much did that go up? Yeah, for it, went down, charge? Um, Pardon? it went down um, so, about uh, about by 15 cents. So we oh, were it went at, down. Yeah, we were, correct. Um, so the reason is, is because the, um, the additional factors that we were utilizing previously, such as staff time in actually making the copies, the attorney general has opined that that is not permissible under open records law. Oh, so okay. that time and that um, those figures had to be taken out of the calculation. Um, current um, law provides that we can only charge for direct costs of, of creation of the, the copy itself, which is the paper, the ink, and any staff time associated in purchasing the paper and the ink and paying the bills and, and um, things like that. But nothing with respect to reviewing, collecting the documents, putting the files mm -hmm. back, making the copies, those were all factored into the staff time portion. Um, and so that had to be taken out. Is that a detriment? Is that a detriment, do you feel, to our departments, you know, as far as costs? Um, I mean, well, we, we have no choice, I understand, but, you correct. know, is, is yeah. that going to be a burden of sorts? Um, what I can tell you is that our, our budget, what we, what we anticipate in revenues from records requests is minimal because we really aren't able to charge very much when it comes to records anyways. Um, so our number is going to go down substantially, but we're talking about, I think we've, we've collected maybe $500 um, for copy fees over the last in, even in our biggest year, we're, we're maybe hitting five hundred dollars that we've no. collected. Oh, it's not so, tremendous amount. Right. No, we don't and they, revenue. So. Okay. And part of the reason it went down is because our costs in general have gone down. So the um, purchasing department has new contracts for paper that have dropped the amount that we are paying by seventeen dollars per case of paper. Um, so that went down. The copy costs in general have gone down. Mm -hmm. um, just because of the, the amount or the, the successes with our um, purchasing department in getting good, the right vendors for the city. So okay. as a result, our, the costs that, we're, that we pass on have also gone down. Okay. Oh, okay. and then Thank the you. last thing is we're only allowed to charge the rate of the lowest skilled employee able to do this. So we had to use the rate <laughs> of the lowest paid employee in our department in calculating our rate. Whereas before, um, when this was generated, um, we were we had employees who had been here for career um, blanks, and so their rate was just much higher than it is right now. Okay. All right. Well, good. Uh, Alder Lafave. I just want to, not to tech savvy. Um, the US, USB uh, digital flash drive. It's two forty-seven. Now that does that include the document, or do they have to pay per page on the document to have it on that? No. Right. So they they just because it, that is basically providing uh, the record or the documents in digital form. So we're not charging any copy costs. It's essentially just paying for the flash drive itself. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. Anybody else on the committee? Walter Stevens, are good. I'm good. Thank you. All right. Um, all right, so so we're just gonna you just, you're looking for approval on this. Yeah. Yep. Just a straight approval. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, by Stephen. Second by Lafave. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimously. All right, we are into informational um, and the liquor violation report. 
or no, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no. homelessness. Yep. Is that Correct. the lieutenant? Yeah. Okay. Lieutenant, go ahead. All right. Um, how much background do you guys have on this? Or did you get any answers to questions from last time we uh, were talking about this? No, I, I mean, personally, I feel that, you know, you get a little bit of a handle on it. You know, you're looking at numbers of calls and the total number of folks and, and the monies and things like that. So it's pretty straightforward. I don't know if the committee has, I know that, uh, you know, Alder Galvin had kind of pushed on this a little bit. So, you know, just the fact that you're reporting out uh, is good. You know, information is always a good thing. So I pre we appreciate that. Um, committee, do you have any specific questions at all? I have a question or comment, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So it says outside resources, fire, ER, or jail, and it says yes or no. What was it be, so it says outside resources, fire, ER, and jail. And then the response is or yes and no. Yeah, so that'll be if, so if the person... Shouldn't it be either if they have fire or if we need an need ER or if they went to jail? Um. The our records uh, for her, the crime analyst lady that's tracking these, she made that a separate category. And if any of those three were touched, it was a yes. It just wasn't specific to which one it was. I'm reading the description on top. It says that you'd be tracking that. And also if it's public or private, or if it happened in a park property, that's not on this list. For the oh on, on the addresses or where, where this stuff happened, yeah, yeah, we didn't. So we I sat down with Galvin later last week to see how this, how he exactly wanted this uh, tracking sheet. After sitting down with him, um, I will tell you the seventeen we have on here is going to drop down to maybe a handful. Uh, all we're really trying to track are the unsheltered homeless to see uh, what. Uh, if if we can better serve them or get the county on board to better help uh, and get them engaged in it, I guess that's a uh, uh, Galvin's angle on um, trying to find out where the issues are with the unsheltered and how we service them better. Is are we, keep, are we keeping track of if it's public or private property? Um, I would have to go through the each call each. Each person is assigned like a case number or a, a sure. report number, um, and I can go. We can go back through and and uh, get like if it was on private or, or not. Um, the some of these are obviously private because some of these people were no trespass on these properties, so yeah. um, they could have been no trespass from a park and, and those things. So, um, but a lot of these are welfare checks very few disturbances or like a suspicious person, somebody acting out of the ordinary and we went and uh, did a welfare check on them. Okay. Alder, let's say. Or, go ahead, Alder. Let's say. Sorry, Mark. Alder, you're excitable. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, Alder. Um, I see on number six here, uh, it's had 23 contacts or calls and it's all alcohol. So yep. is that... Is that one of our resistant ones that uh, just does not want to um, go yeah. to the programs and? Uh, so number six, uh, yeah, he is very well known to us. He is a chronic alcoholic. Um, he was found today, we talked to him um, and it was supposed to be this evening that Newcap was gonna take that person in and do an intake to see uh, what his needs are and see what type of housing uh, they could get him or shelter they could get him. He is eligible to go to any shelter he wants. The only catch is he has to be able to PBT zeros, which isn't probably going to happen. Hmm. He hasn't gotten to that point to where, you know, he wants to stop drinking and um, move on with life. So yeah. that's, you know, those are, that's one of the people that we're looking at and some of the services. Um, in a group of people that Paul Van Handel, myself, and then Mike Baraboo from St. John's, is, we're putting together a, a street outreach team um, to go out and address these issues with these people and make contacts, make relationships, and get them comfortable with us 
and then the system and the, and the service providers to get them on that right track. So those costs that are there, um, yeah. Lieutenant, are they, are they split up between the city and the county or is there some kind of a delineation there? Those are just our costs. So um, if, you go costs, to, if you go to number city. six, you look at him, uh, he's racked up about $2,500 so far. And that's just what it has cost us right. to deal with him off and on uh, through this year so far. Okay, that's oh, I see. That's April first. Oh, it's April first, yeah. April nineteenth. Yeah, it's only for those nine, yeah, 19 been, days. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I, um, I don't know well, if that's the running total for that. Um, yeah, I would. I would like to know that because that, yeah. that seems pretty expensive just for uh, nineteen days, but. You know, what do I know? Well, I can tell you so that, that yeah. You know, yeah, that'd probably yeah, be right you, uh, days. That's probably how much we use for them. If you could uh, just email the committee that, you know, if you got that information, I'd, I'd appreciate it. And then next month when we re reply out, we we'll just want to know if it's a cumulative over a period of the, the year or just the yeah. time period that is shown. <laughs> I want to say when I talked so about that, this that last week, helpful. but I'll clarify that those are that's a running total for the for the year. Okay. These, these calls well, that, are just that would make that would make sense. Yeah, the calls that you see on there sure. are just in the last since the last report. But the dollar amount right. should be a running total, if I remember correctly, our conversation. Perfect. But I'll clarify no, that. Alder Galvin. Okay. No, Alder Galvin, I know has been involved with this. Is he? As he looked at this, I suppose anything at council, you know, this this will come forward. But uh, has he added anything to it as far as it, does he feel like that uh, the city is doing a good job on this, or what? What's your take with that? With with uh, yeah, the Galvin? So I know he had suggested uh, some type of alternative um, to maybe dealing with these people, but you know, his his idea we have number six is about your only candidate for that option. And I talked to him at length mm -hmm. about the street outreach program and along with the mayor. And I believe that I think they've, they're on board with that, which is a more cost effective and more trying to solve the issue than just trying to push that issue into a building until it dies off, you know? Right. Well, it's nice to at least have a handle on looking at the number of folks that we're dealing with and being able to, look at maybe one or two need to work with and if nothing else I, I would think that's helping just handle the situation a little bit better than maybe before I, I that's just my thought yeah I mean it's it's a process some of these people have some pretty high barriers and you know but we're doing our best to get the counselors out there the AODA people you know even the new community clinics coming out and meeting with these people breaking down their barriers getting them more comfortable with us, um, some of these people need to be on meds, so we're working through that. Um, so, yeah, it's it's, it, is, it's a uh, process, but it's you know we, we got to go out and find them and talk to them and, and get them get them the right services. I know that the county is uh, coming forward with uh, some things on homelessness, and I would think that they're working with the city as well. But it looks like they're really looking at trying to solve this issue as much as they can. So it seems like there's a concerted effort in the community and also they're looking at maybe having some of these different organizations that work with homelessness to maybe put down those silos and work together. So it seems like that there's some efforts that way. And I know years ago we were looking for a resource center, but at least now it seems like everybody is kind of working together on this. So I, I think this is a good, factor for that. So we, we appreciate your efforts. Yeah, no problem. Sure. Anything else, uh, Alder Lefebvre? On that uh, issue of the homeless, um, yeah, the coalition is really working. They got a lot of uh, different uh, people coming in and really uh, tackling this. I didn't get a chance to go on the last meeting, just been too busy, but I went to the one of them and it was uh, very interesting to see all the different groups um, and backgrounds of people working on this issue. Right. I think that, yeah, everyone's coming together and finally realize that we got to do something or it's just not going to get better. Right. Yeah. It's a good thing. Alder Stevens, you had something else? Yeah, for Lieutenant. 
So I see that someone put a value to this at $1.16 per minute. What's the breakdown on that? How'd they come up with $1.16? I think that's where they just average out the, the patrol officer's salary. So what the average pay is for a patrol officer who would respond to any one of these people. And that's just kind of where, what they worked it out, what uh, Melissa assigned it as. That's what it cost per minute. Because we may only be per with this person for five minutes. So how do you calculate that? It's not per hour. It's per the time we spend with them. Yeah, I just want to know if it was salary or if they're putting equipment costs in there, you know? You yeah, have to I drive a vehicle over there. You're spending a couple ounces of gas. So. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think they're just going off the, the, the police officer salary. All right, sound good. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion to receive and place and file. All right. Second. Second. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes. Again, thanks, Lieutenant, for you and, your, and the police for working on this. Thank you. Yep. All right. Now to the favorite part of the meeting. Yes, uh, we have no. Oops, sorry. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> the liquor. Yep. No, we have uh, no. The liquor liquor report violation. from May twenty fourth. Yeah, go ahead, Lieutenant. Yeah, we have no. We have no uh, liquor law violations report for this. Huh? All right. Some play some That's pretty good. <laughs> yep. Yep, okay. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. That passes unanimously. Thank you again, Lieutenant. Yep, thank yeah, you. Keep up the good work. Yep. All right. All right. All right. On to adjournment. So we'll have to adjourn. All right. Second. All in the favor. <laughs> seconded by Stevens. So you guys were jumping on that one. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Always yeah. good seeing. Good discussion. Thanks for all the input from everybody. Thank you. Not a, not a bad meeting. I thought it was going to be a lot longer. Thanks. Well, <laughs> Everyone moving it along. You weren't you weren't betting on that. I hope. But anyway, no, I, I think it turned out well. <laughs> you never all right. Know. Good night. Good night, okay, all. Good night. Have a good Goodbye. week.